Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. We've got Gator Unleashed here again. It's, uh, let's see, what is today? Sunday, March the 20th, 2022. Uh, I haven't, haven't had a chance to do anything with the channel here lately. Um, it's funny how this is, <laughs> everything's just so busy. But if not quit, I'm going to be bringing stuff to the channel. Hopefully we'll be bringing more and more to the channel. Uh, making arrangements to build my shooting range. Uh, that'll add some kind of a fun factor to the channel more so um, really that's not what the channel's about though uh, my channel is more about just simple uh, thought promotion uh, when you dive into this world of personal protection and self defense uh, and our second amendment rights speaking of which they just passed uh, more gun control laws in this uh, ominous bill that the Democrats and Republicans slip through at 2 a.m. in the morning. They, they sneak in and pass uh, pass bills Congress does because they can't get everybody to agree on both sides or because they don't want the other side to uh, make any deals and bargains. Uh, so they do dirty, underhanded things like that led by mostly the Democrats but some Republicans was on board. Um, bad time in America. Bad time in the world. But that's not what this is about. I'm not going to go down that road because I can't do nothing about none of it. But I've had some things happen here over the last little bit that's, that's got some, that has promoted some thought for me about uh, personal protection. I've done several videos on uh, self-defense, choosing your weapon, um, and I'm, I'm I'm going to do some more. There's just so there's just so much to it all, and I love it all. And there's some basic things that I always try to touch on, such as um, when you decide to start carrying a weapon. Um, obviously, you need to learn all about how to use it. Uh, I always advise to go to the range, maybe every other weekend put just a small round count through especially since ammo is so expensive right now though it's come down some uh, or maybe go every weekend and just put a few rounds through uh, I believe using your firearm uh, more frequently with just a few rounds is much better than taking it and shooting 150 or 200 rounds through it once every 6 months or once every 3 months so familiarize yourself with your firearm all you possibly can uh, also, I always like to try to touch on, be aware of the type of ammo you, you use. Um, you know, I don't want to be super over repetitive, but all my videos, I always talk about your, your weapon has to fit your hand. Nobody can tell you what weapon you need. Nobody can tell you what works for you. You have to make that choice. You have to go through and check as many guns as you possibly can. Uh, unless you just got loads of money to just go buy guns and if it if it doesn't suit you, go buy another one. If it doesn't suit you, go buy another one. Do your homework. Do some research. Go to shooting ranges. Rent guns and find what you like. Get involved with uh, uh, with groups and, and other people that are into it. And everybody is going to help you. Everybody in this firearm community is super nice. You know, there's exceptions, but the huge majority of people in in involved in personal protection are, are great people. They're going to help you all they possibly can and they will let, maybe let you fire their weapon until you find what you like and then spend your money wisely. That's my advice. That don't mean that's right. That's just what I think is right. I always try to touch on once you make your selection and I, I personally I like a 9mm but that, I like a lot of stuff. I like a 380. I like a 45. I think any of them would do. I think a 22 long rifle will save your life. That's all you can handle if you're a woman and you can't handle a bigger round, bigger firearm. I think a 22 long rifle will work. I've touched on all that stuff in many videos. That's not what I'm about here today. Um, I went to Rupp Arena. I live in Kentucky. <clears throat> My daughter and I went to the Sweet 16 to state tournament. We, we love high school basketball. It's really, really good. She's in high school. Uh, we just love basketball. The NBA game has declined. The college game has declined. High school basketball is still awesome, we think. This this is our feelings. So we've been going to a lot of high school games. 
when we went to the state tournament, I encountered a problem. Um, you're not allowed to take a firearm in Rupp Arena. Rupp Arena is a gun-free zone. I've said in other videos, I, I'm not really for a gun-free zone anywhere. I, I just, that puts me in a tough spot. It really does. Um, now, having said that, I also understand if I owned Rupp Arena, I probably wouldn't want 22,000 people in there with random firearms. So I don't know what the answer is. I just don't know what the answer is. Here's what we encountered. First of all, I've been carrying a Taurus G3C for many months now. And I really like it. Really, really like it. I've got uh, 24 rounds, uh, well, probably 25 rounds. One in the chamber and two 12-round mags which is more than enough for anything that somebody like me or probably you is ever going to run into. I think five rounds would probably take care of any situation for 99.99999% of the people that, heaven forbid, run into some kind of problem. Oh, But I realized that when I went to Rupp Arena, I was not going to be able to take my firearm inside Rupp Arena. So that means I have to leave my firearm in my vehicle parked outside it could get broken into. Somebody could come by and bust the window out and steal everything I got. So if I take an expensive firearm, and the Taurus G3C is not an expensive firearm. Um, it is a firearm that I like. It's one of my favorites. Um, then I've got several Glocks and things that I've carried back and forth. I kind of switch. But I didn't want to risk having my Taurus G3C stolen. I got a real good deal on it. If I was buying another one now, it'd be close to $400 out the door if I could even find one. So that put me in a mode where I had to figure out what I was going to take with us. Because even though I couldn't take my firearm in Rupp Arena, we were still traveling up the interstate, down the interstate, around town, doing this and that. And you never know when you break down or, or what could happen. And you, you, may, need to, you, you may need to fight. Um, probably won't. I'll, almost certainly won't. But it's possible. And it's uh, being as uh, Joe Biden ran on opening the southern border uh, and dead as promised and we're infested with we don't know who uh, and looking at any kind of st stats you look at which the media doesn't touch on any of this but any kind of stat you look at look at uh, such as Houston for example crime has just went through the roof um, brutal crime murders and that's going to spread on out through the country so I, I'm going to be armed as much as possible and there's a so much goes into that there's so much responsibility but anyway so we go to Rupp Arena and I couldn't take what I wanted to so my first thought was well I'll take my little LCP Ruger 380 um, I like this a lot I like this a lot we practice what we preach here I used to not practice what I preach but you can see this does not have anything in it. I unloaded it. Hard to do that the other hand. And these are tough to chamber. And I mentioned in my other videos, women think these little tiny guns are made for them. No, wrong. Harder to work and manipulate and operate in every way. The exact opposite. Uh, but this is the round I carry in these. I carry these little uh, home defense hollow points. And the reason for that, as I always touch on, is over-penetration. I do not want to, if heaven forbid, if I have to pull my pistol out and throw lead at somebody. Can you imagine uh, shooting at the bad guy, we'll say the bad guy, for simplicity, and that bullet going through him and hitting a 14-year-old kid behind him or something. I mean, you, your life is ruined. It's just totally destroyed. So when you decide to start carrying a weapon... I love all the YouTube videos of all the shooting and stuff, and it's, it's great, but don't just think about throwing lead. I mean, think about the consequences of what can happen. Be as responsible as possible. Do everything you can to safely protect yourself and, and everybody around you. A hollow point, you're, you're not gonna have an over-penetration uh, problem. 
still anything can happen. It's just, it's a really touchy subject. I mean, you can see why there's so much debate over gun laws and things, you know. Um, but anyway, back to where I was at. I almost took this pistol with me. And I said, well, you know, these, these have gone through the roof now. And you can't get them. And this is the more expensive one. This has got the steel guide rod, the red trigger, and it's actually got sights on top. Um, the normal Ruger LCP does not have that. This was like 60 bucks more back then. I've had this for years. I don't really know where they are now in price. <clears throat> but this is an awesome firearm. I've put rounds through it, and I've never had a hiccup. It's never made a bobble. I trust this gun. I trust this totally. It holds six rounds. I think it's six plus one. And usually I just carry six. Uh, so I decided I didn't want to take that. I didn't want to take my revolver. So I went back to one of my very first carry guns I bought. Actually, this is the very first carry gun I bought. The Ruger LC9. This is the old one with the hammer. Um, this is the... And I also want to touch on this. This is a perfect example of what I say about how the shooting a firearm at the range is totally different. It's a totally different world than carrying a firearm for personal protection. This is the worst firearm I have to take to the range. It's the hardest to shoot. It's the least accurate. The trigger is awful. It's this horrible trigger. It's a super long trigger pull. It's hammer fired. It's just everything about it. Everything about it on a range is bad. Now, I shoot this at the range every so often. I've shot it twice in the last month. No. Yeah, about a month. Um, and it's just like when, like when you first take this firearm and shoot it when you haven't shot it for a while. It's just horrible. But it starts to grow. You know, it starts getting better if, as you shoot it. And it doesn't take a lot of rounds. 20, 25 rounds. And you, you you've helped yourself tremendously so I decided I was going to take this firearm with me because if somebody did break in my truck and steal my firearm I guess this would be the one I would I could stand to lose the most but when I took it down there I carried it all day uh, left it in the truck when I went in rough of course uh, I fell back in love with it this gun carries it's just such a wonderful carry gun for me. It, it, you can't even tell it's on your side. And I, I, I've done a video on this. This is the holster I use in it, uh, use for it. So, so what I'm trying to get across to you here, this is my setup right here. This, this is just a really, it fits my hand perfect. All the things that are important. My trip to Rupp Arena recently, perfectly, was, was the perfect example of all of those things. This firearm fits my hand perfect. This firearm has an external flip-up safety, which I just absolutely love. I like that. When I fire this weapon, I, I have the safety on. And I'll practice drawing it and just making a habit of, as I come up, flip this down, and it's ready to fire. And that's what you have to do. Now, this is my opinion again. That's what you have to do. Whatever your weapon is, you have to master that weapon. You, you have to know it inside and out. Uh, and it has to be... A natural reaction to when you draw that flip that safety off because if the shit hits the fan your mind is probably going to be all out of shape and you know if you had to shoot somebody that'd be a major deal we, we don't want to shoot people that's we don't, that's the last thing anybody wants to do uh, I, I know on these movies and things some of that's kind of glorified but in the real world I mean if you shoot somebody they're probably going to die and then you have to live with that the rest of your life uh, now, if they're bothering you, um, and if I'm walking out of Rupp Arena, which I did the other night at almost, uh, it was after 10 o'clock, um, and where we parked, we had to go up around the corner, and it wound up, my daughter and I was totally by ourselves. We could not see another human being. All we could see was streets and alleys and an orange road cone that I had used to, in my mind to mark the parking lot where my truck was. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm 51 years old. If a bunch of guys attack us, it would probably be hard for me to save my daughter. I mean, you know, uh, I, you don't know what you're due or, or what you're capable of if something horrible like that was to happen. But I like the thought of having a firearm on my side because I know then that I can take care of the situation. I have no doubt about that then. Uh, when I have my firearm on my side, I'm as bad as Andre the Giant. We are equal. 
That's that's what that's the whole purpose of the Second Amendment. Um, well, actually, it's not, but that's that's the whole purpose of personal protection, of of exercising your right to carry. Um, so when I left Rupp Arena and we was walking up through there, I, I was a little bit uh, fearful of what could possibly happen, and I was so eager and so happy to get to the truck and get it unlocked, to get her in, and get my firearm back in my holster on my side. <clears throat> so. Several things was reignited in my thought process, and that's what these videos I do is about. It's it's not about. I'm not trying to advise people or tell people. I, I advise people to be educated, to master the weapon you choose. That's what I advise people. Uh, I, I advise people to think about over penetration. I advise people to try to uh, go through the process, do your homework and research, and get the firearm that works for you, so you don't have to spend money on several firearms, like I have. Um, of course, it's turned into uh, I, it's turned into somewhat of a collection for me in a way too. Though I mean, I, I like these, I like pistols, and and I like going to the range also, which that opens up a whole new. That's another whole world of owning firearms. It has nothing to do with personal protection, though, other than taking that weapon and training with it. But going to the going to the shooting range and just shooting cans with a twenty two, or, or not even maybe just out behind your house. This is so much fun. That's just the sport of shooting. Personal protection, though, is we mean business. That's that's when it gets down to you being able to take care of yourself. But speaking of over over penetration, this is what I carry in my nine millimeter. Another reason I chose got pretty bad light here. I've kind of redone my room. I, I carry some hollow points. Um, Another reason I made the, the, the decision to go with, oh, that's the wrong one, that's a 380. This is what I carry in my 9mm. Regardless, you see the point, hollow points, so you ain't going to over penetrate. No, anything is still possible. But, but this little trip we took just opened up some thought process on me about gun free zones. I mean, what do we do? What do we do? I mean, I said that I can understand if I own up arena, not wanting a bunch of people in there with guns, but at the same time, if some maniac decides he wants to get a pistol into Rupp arena or even a machine gun, I'd say he'll do it. I'd say he'll do it because people are lax. People think, oh, who would do that? Who would do something like that? There's people out there. So, so then when that happens, there you are sitting in Rupp arena and the guy that broke all their rules and laws that went through a back door or, or had somebody help him get in there with his AR-15 or his uh, Caltech Sub-2000 or his AK-47 with a 75 round drum and a couple of extra mags or, or whatever, or even a 22, or even, even a 22, um, we're at their mercy. We're, we are at their mercy. So when you go somewhere, you know, I've got a Kings Island shirt on. We love Kings Island. We love it. You know, and it's another place you can't go with a firearm on your side. I don't care how much of a law-abiding citizen you are. I don't care if you've never been arrested. I don't care if you pass. There is no, there is no license available possible that will get you in those places with a gun on your side. Just, it's just not going to happen. Um, so I guess where we are is we have the choice to not go to those places. Um, but then you miss out on so much. So it's really a really tough situation. It really is. I mean, I think it's really just a super tough situation because we're not going to miss out. I mean, we, we stay at home a lot, almost all the time. But we do like to go to some of these places. Um, so it puts you in a situation where you have to trust others with your life is what it does. And, and I guess it works out a huge majority of the time. So I, I guess we need to not be afraid and we need to live our lives and just do the best we can. I guess that's all we can do. If anybody's got any suggestions or advice, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't have the answers. I'm just, I'm just kind of sharing my thoughts on it and trying to maybe promote some thought on you guys. Uh, 
I'm really, I guess I'm really not for gun-free zones because, like I said, I believe that they will get the firearm in there if they want to. And, and let's, say, let's, uh, let's assume Rupp Arena was not a gun-free zone and there's 20,000 people in there. Okay? When we went to the ball game the other night, there was, or the ball games, there was 20,000 people sitting there. Nobody had a weapon on their side. Not a single person. Not even a knife. You couldn't even take a pocket knife in. Um, okay, let's say that Rupp Arena was not a gun-free zone. Of those 20,000 people, I'd say 16 or 17,000 still would have been completely unarmed. That's just the way people are. Um, and that's sort of sad to me. I'd, I'd like to see everybody armed. What causes problems, though, is you've got people that are, first of all, you've got people that are hot-headed and high-tempered. And that's a major flaw to your personality. And none of us are perfect. And, and I have myself been... I guess sort of hot-tempered in the past. And I, I can still flare up. That's a weakness. That's a flaw. Um, now, I've never came close to flaring up and shooting nobody, but I have flared up and popped somebody in the nose before. Um, and, and that's a lot less severe of a consequence. <laughs> but we I don't know the answers. Um, but, but touching on the problems with, with gun gun rights everywhere is I, I just don't know you know people that fly off the handle sometimes maybe they don't need to carry a gun if, if you can't if you can't control your temper I guess maybe you need to not carry a gun out in public maybe just have a firearm at home and again I can't tell you what to do I'm not trying to tell you what to do I'm just trying to I'm just trying to promote thought We don't want to shoot people. We don't want to see people shot. But anyway, I, I guess I've rambled on enough here. I hope I've got some some of my thoughts across what I'm trying to share. Carrying your weapon and going to the range, two different worlds. They share nothing. They share nothing. No resemblance to each other. When you go to the range, when I go to the range... Yes, sometimes, uh, almost every time, I will spend a little bit of time with my curry weapon. I'll put some rounds through it, usually the first thing when I get there. Because, as I've said many times in probably every video I've done, the better, the more familiar you are with your weapon, the better your chances are going to be if something horrible happens. And it probably won't happen. We don't want to live in fear. We do want to be ready. We do want to be ready. We, we do want to be aware of the possibility that bad things can happen. That's how I feel about it. Um, but then the rest of the time I'm at the range, and sometimes I will, we'll stay at the range for hours. Uh, we just target shoot. You know, it's just so much fun. It's so much fun to run a target out there and try to uh, try to put all ten rounds in in the center targets. You know, or, or whatever you're trying to do. It's it's just really really fun trying to be accurate, practicing that trigger, squeezing that trigger, breath control. It's just there's so much to it. I, I enjoy it, and a lot of people do. None of that carries over into a real-world situation, though, <clears throat> of trying to protect you and your family. So, so it's two different worlds, and being forced to carry this worst range gun I have at the state tournament reignited my thought process on just how totally opposite the range is and the real world. When you're, if something was to hit the fan, this uh, this long trigger pull is not going to bother you a bit if somebody's trying to kidnap your daughter or or if you're surrounded by four guys with ball bats that's going to beat you guys to death <laughs> pulling that trigger you're not going to think about how long that trigger pull is or you're not going to be waiting for that for it to break and fire you, you, everything is going to be wild and the practice you've done at the range is going to take over that's what I think is going to happen uh, it would be awful to shoot somebody but if you was with your daughter and surrounded by some guys that mean you harm you'll do what you have to do I believe and the training that you've done yourself it's on you and and I totally totally love to see people go to classes I love to see people get their concealed carry license even if your state doesn't require it Kentucky no longer requires it uh, I don't think Alabama does I think Alabama just recently uh, passed a law allowing you to conceal carry without a permit. Uh, I'm not sure about that. It's on you to check your local laws. You want the law on your side. 
And the more things you do like that, the more proactive you are in getting licensed and things, that's that's the uh, better your chances of the law being on your side. Because they look at you and it's obvious. They say, well, this guy, he, he's done his homework, he's got his license, he's, he's in this for the right reason. He's not out looking for trouble. He's out just simply prepared to save his life and protect his family or his friends or strangers or whatever if he has to. Um, and I think that's where we want to be. But anyway, I'm going to cut this video off. I hope you guys got something out of this. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I uh, hope everybody has a great weekend. It's uh, really pretty out today here in uh, Kentucky. Uh, I hope you enjoy the basketball tournament and whatever you do. Be safe, guys. We'll see you in the next video.